I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. It's just good to be here. We thank and praise God for allowing us to come together once again. We pray that you will hit that, click that share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. God wants to use each of us. He created us for his glory. But in order to be used by God, we have to make sure that we have an intimate relationship with him. Because God has a purpose for our lives. And if we seek him, he will reveal to us what his purpose is. My prayer is that God will use me to do his will and for his glory. And that is to tell everybody I know about the saving power of Jesus Christ. Saying yes to God is the best decision that we can ever make. Our scripture will come from Psalm 32, 8 through 11. And it reads, The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Do not be like a senseless horse or mule that needs a bit and bridle to keep it under control. My, many sorrows come from the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad, all you who obey him. Shout for joy, all you whose hearts are pure. Now, sometimes it may not seem as though the Lord is in control of our lives because our lives may seem to be spinning out of control. But verse number eight says, the Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. And I will advise you and watch over you. So whichever pathway God is taking us on, guess what? Verse 11 tells us to rejoice in the Lord and be glad all you who obey him. So we have to just rejoice in the Lord when we're going through trials and tribulations because God is taking us on the path that he wants us to go. Our song this morning is, Yes, Lord, Yes. When your spirit speaks, I'll say yes. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. My mind says yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. My mind says yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart i'll agree and my answer will be yes lord yes my soul says yes lord yes to your will and to your way my soul says yes 
Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come. God, we thank you for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity to come before you. We thank you, Father God, for who you are, for what you do. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you for another privilege, another chance, Father God, just to obey your will. We say yes to your will, yes to your word, and yes to your way. God, we honor you today. And we are pleased with what you do with our lives. And Lord, we want you to be pleased with us. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins, mold and shape our lives, Father God, that we will be about your business. Bless us, Lord, as we study, read, preach, and teach your word, that our lives will roll on just a little while longer, that we, Father God, will stand and tell men, women, boys, and girls about this Jesus who can save and deliver all. We thank you, Lord, for this privilege of coming before you, Father God. We thank you for this honor of speaking with you and for you. We ask you, Father God, to bless us in our service on today, that life will be different. Father God, we pray, Father God, that in this setting, Father God, you will reveal yourself in a mighty way. We pray, Father God, that you bless us in this setting, Father that this setting will be different than ever before. Yes. In this setting, Father God, that men, women, boys, and girls will turn their lives around and that men, women, boys, and girls will honor you in a mighty way. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We ask you to bless your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Amen and thank the, the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. <coughs> Let me call your attention to the book of St. Matthew, the book of St. Matthew, chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. Matthew, chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. Thank all of you for joining us on Facebook Live as well as Zoom. Uh, we have several components going this morning, so thank you for joining on number one and thank you for joining on number two and thank you for joining us by way of zoom so thank you so much for being a part of this service on today matthew chapter 8 verses 14 through 17. <clears throat> matthew chapter 8 verses 14 through 17. when you found it you will discover these words now, when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and served them. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed and he cast out the spirits 
with a word and healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. I want to talk about Jesus, the great physician. Jesus, the great physician. We find ourselves today in need of a physician. We find ourselves in need of a healer. We see that COVID-19 is running rapid throughout our nation and I dare say throughout our world. We have discovered, we have discovered, we have seen that man cannot fix it. And we've discovered that even when man gives advice, there are disparities, disparities among races, creeds, and color. There are differences when man gives the answer among sex, among gender, and now we have on the scene a non-binary gender meaning that we find people who are famous and those who want to be famous claiming themselves to neither be male nor female. Mm -hmm. They are non-binary, meaning they're neither a X or a Y. They're neither a one or a zero. We live in a sick society. Mm -hmm. It is sick physically and it is sick spiritually. Amen. We need help. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. Mm -hmm. If we're going to really get a grip, if we want to going to really get a hand on this sickness that we find ourselves stuck in, we're going to need to run to Jesus. Amen. Jesus, our Savior, Jesus, our Lord, Jesus, the Lord of Lords, we need Jesus. Amen. There's no debate, mm -hmm. although many try to debate. The great conquering king of Calvary, Jesus himself, is the one who is making a difference and who will make a difference. Mm -hmm. We find none, no, none other than that in this pericope that we just presented to you in Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. This particular pericope is followed, is following two previous pericopes that Matthew records in chapter 8. The first uh, few verses he records, verses 1 through 4, he records the cleaning of the leprosy. The lepers, those who were sick, those who found themselves in a dire situation, lepers were cleansed, were cleansed in such a way until they had to leave and go show themselves to the preacher. You see, now we go to the doctor and the doctor gives us a full bill of health. But in the biblical days, they would have to go and show themselves to the priest, for the priest was the one who told them that they were sickness free. Because not only was they, were they a part of this physical ailment, they were also a part of a spiritual ailment. This ailment was passed down from Adam and Eve to all mankind. When we look at the second pericope in Matthew chapter 8, beginning at verse 5 and ending at verse 13, we find out that Jesus is on the scene and there's a centurion soldier there. And this soldier was healed. 
He was laying paralyzed. He was tormented. But Jesus was asked to him to heal him. And this centurion soldier asked him, Lord, am I not worthy for you to come to my house? He said, speak a word. And by your, ser your servant will be healed. Mm -hmm. When you look at these pericopes, you will find that Jesus identifies and Jesus confirms the fact that he is Lord over sickness. That's right. I'm telling you today that if anybody can do it, Jesus can. Amen. He is Lord over all sickness. He is able to bless us in ways that many times we can't even dream of. Right. Because Jesus the Christ, he himself is Lord. He's Lord, he's Lord over sickness. He is Lord over depression. He is Lord over lords. He is the great I am Lord. Not only that, today we see that Jesus not only is Lord over sickness, he is the great physician. Amen. Who is? Jesus is the great physician. We move now to verses number 14 through 17, where we will find in our hearing that Jesus had just gotten through healing many, and he finds himself at Peter's house. Okay. He finds himself at Peter's house. And when he got to Peter's house, he understood really well because Peter and Andrew made sure that Jesus had a good understanding that Peter's mother-in-law was suffering from a fever. She suffered from a fever. She suffered from a fever. And many times we understand now that fever is a temporary increase of the body's temperature due to some kind of ailment, some kind of illness, and due to some kind of infection. This fever that Peter's mother-in-law suffered from is not uncommon because we understand that in many infections, in many fevers, we have a high temperature. Mm -hmm. That high temperature speaks to the outside and says to us that the body is trying to fight away some kind of internal happening that's not an ordinary happening. That's right. Let me tell you, we don't live in ordinary conditions today. We have a fever, and we ought to have we ought to have some um, realities about us. First of all, the first reality that we must come to grips with is that sickness is real. Right. Sickness is real. It doesn't matter how holy you are. It doesn't matter how how well you've been. It doesn't matter how much exercise you get, how much eating right you do. There are some who've been sick will tell you they ate all their vegetables. They ate vegetables on a regular basis. They will tell you that they got plenty of exercise. They will even tell you they used to burn the treadmill up. <laughs> there are some who are sick today or have been sick will tell you that sickness is a reality. I stopped by on my way to the rapture to remind you that it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. You can do all the things that the doctor says to do, but the reality is sooner or later, you're going to have some sickness. And this sickness that we have is due to what Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eve. They messed up. They fell short. They sinned, and therefore we begin sick ever since. Not only have we been getting sick, but we've been dying ever since Adam and Eve. Mayo Clinic, Mayo Clinic, the greatest clinic, the greatest hospital system in all of the United States, and I dare say all the world, says that discomfort comes when your body temperature rises from 98.6 
to around 103 degrees Fahrenheit. There will be some discomfort and, and it causes major upsets in the body, so much so till we ought to be concerned. I want to tell you today, we live in a nation, we live in a world where the temperature has been turned up. The temperature is far above 103 degrees. When we see racism like never before, the temperature has been turned up. When we see uh, people who are choosing their own way rather than God's way, the temperature has been turned up. Mayo Clinic says when this temperature gets to 103 degrees Fahrenheit, it ought to cause some concern. It ought to cause concern. You ought to want to look to see the doctor whenever the temperature is 103 degrees or more Fahrenheit. This fever is a bad thing. It says that there's a body <laughs> infection. In, there's a body, uh, the body is going through some inflections and some infections. Mm -hmm. And there are signs of fever. Whenever fever occurs, it assists the body. It assists the body in fighting off infections. So sometimes we understand that even though something is going wrong on the inside, the fever alerts us as well as others that there are some infections going on that we cannot see. Amen. It reminds me of the war that's going on. This war is a war that we cannot see. It is a war going on in heavenly places. It, it's a war that's going on all around us. It is a war that's going on in the spiritual realm. But thank God that we know through the word of God, it alerts us that the war is real. When you have a fever, there are symptoms of the fever. Sometimes these symptoms include sweating, mm. shivering, chills, body getting warm and body getting cold. The fever oftentimes alerts us by giving us headaches and uh, there's muscle pains and there are irritability going on. When you got a fever, you don't want to mess with folks. Well, you know what? When you have a fever, you don't want people messing with you. <laughs> because fever is something that causes irritability and dehydration. Fever even causes us to have a lack of appetite. Yeah. It is something that causes weakness. And when fever gets so high, it causes mental confusion, vomiting. Rash begin to come upon the body. There's a shortness of breath. Sometimes there are even seizures. Mm -hmm. And many times people find themselves fainting. When we look at this fever situation, we move back to Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. We find Peter's mother-in-law sick. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> She's not only sick, but she's lying down sick. She's in the bed sick. She, she is being restrained by this fever, so much so that it's caused weakness. Mm -hmm. This woman is laying in the bed. Jesus, Jesus had compassion on her. You see, during that day, women wasn't very much. <laughs> Women weren't seen as disciples of Christ. Women weren't seen as those on the upper echelon when it came to the religious belief. Jesus is the one who set women free. It wasn't the equal rights movement. It, it, it wasn't the women's liberation movement. It was Jesus that set women free. Yes. Jesus had compassion on people who were sick. The reality is there are many in our nation that has no compassion on the sick. That's right. They have no compassion on the weak. They have no compassion on those in need. Right. If you don't have a certain name, if you're not a part of a certain party, if you're not a part of a certain neighborhood, if you're not a part of a certain reality, then you get passed over and passed by. This pericope shows us that Jesus 
Jesus looks at every person as a person whose needs are needed to be addressed. Amen. Jesus looks at every person as a person who is qualified as a human being. In Dallas, Texas, when asked during the season of Ebola, when asked the lead, asked of the lead nurse, why did you risk your life? Why did you risk the life of your team to fight Ebola when it was only one man in your hospital with Ebola? Why did you risk the life of a whole team to go in and take care of this man? Her reply was, because I saw humanity. Hmm. Let me tell you, humanity, humanity ought to have compassion. Humanity ought to pull compassion for us, from us. Humanity ought to cause us to have so much compassion for our fellow man and a mankind, we ought to give ourselves to humanity. Amen. Even today, there are doctors, nurses, technicians, firefighters, there are police officers, there are social workers, there are people giving their lives and risking their very own life for the sake of humanity. We need a generation today who, who understands humanity mm -hmm. and understand that humanity needs compassion. Doesn't matter what political party you've chosen. It doesn't matter whether you are, are male or female. It doesn't matter if you're confused of who you are. You need compassion. Amen. The reality is there's sickness all about us. But look at Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. We find Peter's mother-in-law. Not really a person that's on the scene other than in Luke, Matthew, and Mark in this one little pericope. It says to us that everybody is important. Mm -hmm. Jesus has made it clear that every person on planet Earth, all of humanity is important. So little girl, little boy, don't think that you ought to have low self-esteem because somebody told you that you're not important. Everybody is important, and they have to be important to us because they're important to Jesus. Right. Says that this woman, this, this lady, it, 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 the text doesn't even call her name. Mm -hmm. It says to us that even when you, in the midst of the unknown, even when you are the unknown, even when people don't know your name, you're important to God. You see, some people worry about their titles. Some people worry about their names being put on the plaque. They worry about their names on the cornerstone. They, they worry about their names and their titles, and they will let you know that this is my name and this is my title, and you need to call me by my name and my title. Hurting humanity is so important until Jesus stops by to visit with a woman. And when he gets there to visit with his disciples, he goes in, he visits with this woman and let her know it doesn't matter what your name is. It doesn't matter what your complaint is. It doesn't matter whether you voted for me or not. The fact of the matter is you're important because you're humanity. Verse 15 says, as this woman laid there with the sickness from a fever, <laughs> he touched her hand and the fever left her. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 8, the text declares that Jesus touched her hand. Mark declares that Jesus touched her and raised her up. Luke says, in Luke chapter 4, Luke says that Jesus stood over her and rebuked the fever, and the fever left her. Mm -hmm. Regardless of which writer you follow, the fact of the matter is, the reality of it is, is Jesus is the master of all sickness. Mm -hmm. He is the master over all sickness. He is the master above all things. So the first thing is, there's a reality we must face. In this reality, we must understand that sickness is real. Mm -hmm. We must understand that sickness weakens us. 
And thirdly, we must understand that sickness kills us. I'm talking about sickness from a physical standpoint. <laughs> sickness from a medical standpoint will kill us. But I also want to tell you that sickness from a, a racial standpoint, sickness from, from, a, from an issue of political standpoint will kill us. Mm -hmm. The reality is all of us are going to come across some sickness. Yes. I want to say to you today, when you come to the reality, the next thing you must come to is the remedy. It's right there in the text. The Bible says, verse number 15 of Matthew chapter 8, verse 15 says, So he touched her hand, and the fever left her. The remedy, the remedy is we need a touch from Jesus. Amen. Don't, don't get so caught up on the fact that Luke doesn't say that he touched her. But Jesus is able to touch us physically, Amen. and he's able to touch us spiritually. Amen. Don't get into a debate and don't get into an argument because in Luke chapter 4, he doesn't say he touched her, but let me tell you, he touched her. Mm -hmm. Matthew declares that he touched her hand. He touched her hand. The, the, the remedy is that we need a touch from Jesus. Amen. We need a touch. We need a touch from him in our mind. We need a touch from him in our heart. Whenever we don't treat people right, we need a touch from Jesus. Yes, Whenever we don't study his word like we ought to, we need a touch from Jesus. Whenever we procrastinate on doing what we know God has called us to do, let me just remind you, you need a touch from Jesus. Amen. Doesn't matter what color, doesn't matter what flavor, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't matter what political party, it doesn't, doesn't matter what church you attend, you need a touch from Jesus. Matter of fact, it doesn't matter how long you've been holy, yes. how long you've been saved. The reality is sickness will show up, but the remedy is a touch from Jesus. Amen. The text declares that he touched her hand. Mm -hmm. The remedy is we need a touch from Jesus. The remedy is that Jesus has healing power. The remedy is Jesus knows how to defeat the devil. Yes. You see, some sickness is because of our sin. Mm -hmm. But many times we are sick even though we haven't sinned. Yes. Sometimes folk will lie on you. Sometimes folk will lie for you. Sometimes you will be in the shape that you are in because of your sin. I may be talking to somebody this morning that understands really well that you put your own self in that position. You put your own self into your own reality. Amen. You put your own self into a position that you really, 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 really wish you don't, hadn't gotten in. Calm down, honey. Mm -hmm. Calm down, dude. <laughs> Calm down, fella. Understand really well that Jesus is the remedy yes. for all our sins. He's the remedy for us getting ourselves into a financial bind. Jesus is the remedy. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the remedy for us choosing the wrong man, the wrong woman over and over again. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the remedy. Yes, Lord. The reality is we all make mistakes. The reality is we all fall short. The reality is that Jesus is the remedy yes, for all our realities. I said to you, Jesus defeats Satan in this text. In the text, Jesus defeats Satan. Mm -hmm. So Jesus comes into Peter's house. The text declares that he put his hands on her hand. He, he touched her hand and the fever left. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that just a little contact with Jesus mm -hmm. <laughs> make things better. When you look at Mark chapter 5, there was a woman had an issue of blood for 12 long years. She was hemorrhaging from her body, and she touched the hem of his garment. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get all crazy because he, she touched the H-E-M him. Because the fact of the matter, she touched the H-I-M him. She touched him. That's why Jesus said, virtue left me. That's right. Because... She drained virtue from him. 
Let me tell you, you got to get in touch with Jesus. And the way to get in touch with him is spend some time with him. You see, sometimes you have to call on Jesus and Jesus will arrive in a hurry. Other times, because you've been walking so closely with him, you can think it and Jesus is right there right now on the scene. The Bible says that this woman in, in Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 through 15, the Bible says that Jesus touched her and when he touched her, the fever left right away. Luke and Matthew said it left immediately. Mark declares that it left immediately. The fever left her, and after the fever left her, she began to work for the Lord. I'm talking to somebody out here today. God has blessed you. God has given you another chance. God has turned life around for you. God has given you a job, and, and you ought to be given to him. God has given you a new lease on life and you ought to be serving him. God has given you a new determination to, to run on with him. You ought to keep your promise to God. We ought not live like the wino. Goes out one weekend, gets sloppy drunk, or the alcoholic gets sloppy drunk, he's vomiting and he's in pain and he makes God all kinds of prom all kinds of promises. And when he makes God these promises and stuff like this, Lord, if you get me out of this one, right. God, if you get me out of this one, I tell you what, God, I won't ever put myself in this situation again. <laughs> then he get with his friends, his friend tell him, man, you know, you got to chase a high with a high. You got to chase a drink with a drink. You got to drink a little more in order to get well. And there he is again, getting himself or herself in the same situation. That ought not be our testimony. It ought not be that when God delivered us, when God saved us, we ran back to the same old situation over and over again. When God lets you out, get out and stay out. When God pulls you out, bless the Lord and get up and serve him. The Bible says that this woman arose and she served them. The Bible says that this woman got up from a fever that could have caused her death. She got up and the fever was immediately gone. She got up and when she got up, she started working for the master. Mm. Let me tell you that you ought to be working for the master. Don't, don't let this lockdown shut down, lock in, and, and don't let this situation that we are in now cause you to not work for the Lord. I know it's easy to get satisfied, it's easy to get, get settled in, it's easy to, to just hang out, and it's easy not to go to church, it's easy, easy not to work for the Lord, it's easy not to be on your missionary journey because you, nobody's looking. <laughs> it's easy to just turn your back on God, but don't turn your back on God. Because if you turn your back on God, you're going to find yourself needing God again and again and again. This woman got up and she sets a great example for us. She has a right response. So there is a reality. The reality is that, that sickness is real. The reality is that sickness will weaken us. The reality is that sickness will kill us. But this woman discovers the remedy. The remedy is that Jesus touches her and she touches him. The remedy is that Jesus has held in power. The remedy is that even if your sickness is because of the devil, Jesus has a way of defeating the devil. He's the remedy. And then there ought to be a response. You look at this woman, this is how she responds. She, she gets up, and when she gets up, she begins to serve the Lord. How many of you today are guilty of not serving the Lord? God's been good to you. God has blessed you. God has manifested himself in the midst of your situation. God has been good to you. Yes, yes. My question today, are you serving God after he's been good to you? It doesn't matter if you got a bank account that's thriving. It doesn't matter if your 401k has taken a dive. It doesn't matter if you got the right money that you need. It doesn't matter if you live in the right place that you want to live in, whether your community is a gated community or not. God has been good to you. Amen. 
because he kept you all night and woke you up this morning. There are some people that didn't wake up in the response. The response ought to be that we're going to work for the Lord, the balance of our days. And in this same pericope, we deal with the fact, verses 16 through 17, that Jesus, when evening had come, he received those who were demon-possessed. And as he see, received those who are demon-possessed, you understand that there was a reality, don't you? And the reality is they were sick. They were sick in their minds. They were sick in their hearts. They were sick in their spirits. The reality is they were sick. The remedy was that Jesus was on the scene. The Bible says that he cast out these spirits with a word. Been talking to you last three weeks to tell you that you need to know the word. Know the word. You got to know the word. You have to know the word. It's the word of God. It's the word of Jesus that makes us whole. You have to know the word. So the Bible says Jesus speaks. He casts out demons. Demons have to get on the run. Demons have to flee. He casts out spirits with a word. And healed all that was sick. Here it is. Jesus casts out demon possessed. I, I said to you that, that Satan is defeated by Jesus. The demons, the demons have a way of tormenting us. The demons have a way of messing with us. But Jesus cast out demons and those with demonic spirits. Let me just say to you today, if you're saved, if you're born again, I believe the Bible is clear that once you're saved, the Holy Spirit is within you. That's right. And because the Holy Spirit is within you, the demonic spirits can't come into you. You're right. he, can in, he can influence you. He can tell you to do something and you can do it. But the fact of the matter is, once you are saved, you have the awesome spirit of God on the inside of you. God himself resides in you. Don't get in another line to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is already there. Once you confess Jesus as your Lord, believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, let me tell you, you have the Holy Spirit residing within you. That's why the old saints back home would say he walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me, I am his own. So Jesus heals sick people. He heals those who are demon possessed. And then verse 17 says this, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah. Isaiah the prophet, and this is what Isaiah the prophet said. He himself took our iniquities and bore our sins. He himself, who is he? Jesus took our infirmities. He took our iniquities. He bore our sickness on a whole rugged cross. He, Jesus, who did it? Jesus himself. He took our infirmities, our shortcomings. He, he took our sicknesses. He, he took our infirmities, he took our sins, he took our iniquities, he bore our sicknesses. Yes, he paints the picture here in Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. He paints a vivid picture of how he is Lord over all. He is Lord over all sickness. He's Lord, Lord over all demon possession. But the fact of the matter is, Jesus is Lord for all. Amen. He has made himself available, and he did it over 2,000 years ago. He bore our infirmities. Mm -hmm. He bore our sicknesses. Mm -hmm. Jesus did. The one who knew no sin, he bore our iniquities. He bore, bore our infirmities on a skull hill called Calvary. Amen. He died for you and for me. 
The prophet Isaiah declares to us this morning that he himself, who is he himself? Jesus himself bore and took up our infirmities. We all been sick for something. We all been sick because of something. We all have had a die fever, but Jesus has made us whole. I told you before that this fever that, that Peter's mother-in-law had was, it could have been unto death. The fever that we have running rampant in our country, it can be unto death. It has been unto death, but we have to call on Jesus. Amen. We have to do the same thing that Peter and Andrew did this day when Peter and Andrew says his mother-in-law, his wife's mama is in there sick. His wife, mother, I'm telling you, she must have been a mother in love and not a mother in law. I'm so glad I got a mother in love. I'm so glad I got somebody that I can praise the Lord for because Jesus had to go and see by her, but he only got to see her because of Peter and Andrew. Says my wife, mama, my wife, mother is sick. Let me tell you, this nation is sick. This nation is in an uproar. This world is sick. This world is in an uproar. But we need Jesus. And we need Jesus because not only does Jesus wipe away our infirmities, he also wipes away our sin. No, no, it's not a skin problem. It's a sin problem. But until we reach Jesus and go to him as our remedy, we will not have the right response. Amen. The right response is Jesus. The right answer is Jesus. Amen. The right person is Jesus. The right savior is Jesus. We got to go to Jesus. Amen. We have to go to Jesus. So here we have it, the reality. The reality is we all going to get sick. The reality is that sickness is going to find its way to our house. The reality is that sickness may be unto death. But the fact of the matter is Jesus is the remedy. And even if this sickness is unto death and we have Jesus as our remedy, we can walk with him all the way from here to glory. The reality is sickness is there. The reality is demon possession is all around us. But the fact of the matter is Jesus is our remedy. Yes. And it based on how we respond. Our response must be one where we trust Jesus. Yes. Look at this woman. This woman, this woman, after Jesus healed her, this woman got up and she began to serve. The problem is during this pandemic, people have gotten relaxed and not serving. People have gotten so comfortable. They've gotten so comfortable with showing up with, with their pajamas on. And it's all right. That's what you ought to do. But what, what you ought to do is serve. You ought to find a way to serve somebody. You ought to find a way to serve the Lord. You ought to find a way to become a missionary unto the Lord. Because God has been good to us. You can ask a person in your house, why do you love me? And sometimes you'll get the right answer, the correct answer. It's because you love me first. So you wouldn't have loved me if I hadn't loved you. I, I said to you, I love you because you love me first. I want to say to you this morning, if, if you don't love Jesus for any other reason other than the fact that he first loved you. And because he has first loved you, you need to understand that wh while he has first loved you, you ought to love him enough to serve him. Amen. This woman got up and she began to serve and she began to lean and depend on the fact that the fever had left her. And many times when fever leaves you, it leaves you weak. Jesus paints the picture, Matthew paints the picture, Mark and Luke paint the picture that this woman fever left her immediately and she was no more weakened because Jesus, the remedy, had caused her to have a good response. Yes. I want to say to you today, you understand the reality. <laughs> you understand that Jesus is the remedy. <laughs> But don't forget the last part. You need to have a valuable response. Yes. And your response ought to be to serve him. To move in such a way that Jesus know that you're appreciative 
of what he has done. A lot of people have gone without this year. A lot of people have gone without jobs, without food, without clothing. But God has always, always sent somebody by. To drop just a morsel off. To mm -hmm. speak a kind word. You ought to be grateful to God. And so much so until you love the Lord and show your love for him by serving him. Yes. I said to you that, that this sickness was not unto death. I want to say to you our sin. Our sin sick souls. The world that we live in cannot put sin on us that cause us to sin unto death because of Jesus being the remedy. Yeah, he became the remedy over 2,000 years ago. Jesus the Christ died on an old rugged cross. He, he died for you and he died for me. He gave his life for you and for me. He died on an old rugged cross. He, he died on a skull hill called Calvary. Jesus the Christ died for you and he died for me. Yes, he, did. he died. He was not guilty of sin. He was not guilty of what they claimed that he had done. He went through a kangaroo court. He went through a court where they yes. put stuff on him. They plant stuff on him, but he died voluntarily. Amen. They didn't have to take his life. He laid his life down for you and for me. He died over 2,000 years ago to set us free from our infirmity of sin. Yes. He set us free over 2,000 years ago. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. Yes, he did. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. Mean men killed him. He gave his life on that hill for you and for me. Yes. For our iniquities, for our infirmities, for our sicknesses, he died for us. They took him off the cross, laid him in Joseph's brand new tomb. They laid Jesus in Joseph's brand new tomb. It was a tomb that had never been laid in. It was a tomb that no dead men had ever arrived to. He stayed there in Joseph's new tomb. Joseph of Arimathea, he, he stayed there. He stayed there because he promised that he would get up on the third day. And lo and behold, early that third day morning, mm -hmm. he got up with all power yes, and heaven and earth in his hand. You see, Jesus is our remedy. And not only is he our remedy, Jesus the Christ is the one who is Lord over sickness. And now he is proven to be Lord over all death. Yes, right. He rose early that third day morning with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He rose for you and he rose for me. Jesus Christ died, was buried. He rose early that third day morning so you can be born again. Yes. So you can be saved. So he can show the world the power of Jesus the Christ. He is Lord. He is Lord of all. Yes. And those who don't buy to him now, I tell you, you will bow to him later. Paul says in Philippians that you can choose. You can choose what you want to do. Whatever you do, you can choose to buy now or you can choose to buy later. Yes. Paul says to us that every knee must bow. Mm -hmm. Every tongue must confess that Jesus the Christ is Lord. Amen. He is Lord over all and we must trust him. You may be listening to me today. And you have not trusted the great king of Calvary, Jesus himself. If you're listening to me today and you have not trusted Jesus in the departing of your sins, this is your moment. You need to get to know Jesus. He is the one who heals us from all our sins, all our iniquities, from all our infirmities, from all our shortcomings. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Will you come to Jesus? You don't need to come in no shape, form, or fashion. Just come just as you are. Say, Jesus, I'm sick. I, you may not be sick physically, but if you have not trusted Jesus as your Savior, you are sick spiritually. You need to get to know him. And you can get to know him right here, right now, today. 
just believed that he died for your sins, he rose from the dead. And if you believe this story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, you will be saved right here, right now. If you would, join me in prayer and invite Jesus into your life that he would be your Savior and be your Lord. Just repeat after me this very simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We believe that if you trust Jesus as your Savior and you believe the story that he died, was buried in a borrowed tomb, and rose early that third day morning, you prayed this prayer to invite him into your life. We believe that you're born again. Very simple prayer, very simple way to get to heaven when you die. We're all going to die. We're all going to leave here some way or the other. And when you leave here, you need to raise your head and your eyes in heaven. There may be somebody else listening to me today who don't have a church home. And we are doing church virtually, but you need a church home. I recommend this one, the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. Where Jesus is the captain of the ship, and we do all things based on Jesus. Will you join us today as a part of the New Beginning Church? Every person needs a home, and every person needs a church home. I say join the New Beginning Church. You can do that by inboxing me, and we will have the joy of fellowshipping together. If you re receive Jesus Christ as your Savior today, please inbox me and let me know that you received him, and you know him now as your Savior, and we will walk with you to make sure you get to know him as your Lord. And if there is someone listening to me today who needs prayer, Please inbox me and let me know that you need prayer. We'd be glad to pray, pray with you and share with you. And your prayers will, between, will be, be between us and God. We trust God and we trust what he's doing. Please inbox me and let me know. Amen. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to our friends, our family members, and our visitors for joining us here on our broadcast at the New Beginning Church. And now it is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you want to give, you can do so by one of three means. You can do so by our cash app. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Cash app, dollar sign, NBC Souls. You can give by way of cash app dollar sign NBC Souls. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is our email, lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Zelle account, lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. We believe that as we lift Jesus, Jesus will draw all men. So our, our Zelle is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail it in, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. Please continue to join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Sunday school and 1045 a.m. for our worship service. Join us Wednesday night, including this Wednesday night, for our Bible study at 7.20 p.m. 
We'll be so glad to have you and you'll be so glad that you've joined us. We look forward to taking communion virtually next week, taking communion virtually next week together, next Sunday at 1045. Go ahead and spend this week getting your bread and your, your drink together. We have chosen to drink grape juice and crackers or grape juice and bread. So be a part of our service next week and also be prepared to take communion, celebrating what Jesus has done for us in his death, burial, and his resurrection. Jesus says, for as often as you do this, you show forth my death and my suffering until you come again. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We are the New Beginning Church. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, empowering schools, and impacting neighborhoods throughout the world. We are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. For Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12, verse 32. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for who you are, for what you do. We thank you, Lord, that we have the reality that sickness is real. We have the reality, Father God, that sickness will weaken us. We have the reality, Father God, that sickness kills us. But thank God for Jesus, we have the remedy. The remedy is that Jesus is able to touch us. And when Jesus touch us, his healing power flows. The, the remedy is that Jesus defeats Satan. And we thank you for the remedy. Now, Lord, bless us in our godly response. That our response will be that healing will take place. Lives will be saved. Satan will de be defeated. And we will serve and worship God. Bless us in our response. Now, to him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only wise and only great God. Unto him be power, be dominion, and glory. Until we meet again, let us say together, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.